Hello everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In this short tutorial, let's learn a very interesting topic in neoplasia that is tumor markers. In the next 10 to 15 minutes, we will see, we will learn what is the definition of tumor marker and how can we classify various tumor markers. Let us understand the importance of tumor markers in pathology and oncology specifically. Let us see how these tumor markers are measured or detected in the blood and body fluids. And finally, we will look into what are all the limitations of utility of tumor markers in uh, cancer diagnosis and management. Right. Now, what are tumor markers? Classically, you know, tumor markers refers to substances which are directly produced by tumor or cancer cells or by other cells in response to a particular tumor or cancer okay and these tumor markers are present in the blood and other body fluids but they are not specific as when i say that they can also be expressed by healthy tissues and a very small concentration could be detected in healthy subjects bloodstream right now you should note that the tumor markers which are measured in serum are called serum tumor markers and tumor markers can also be assessed directly on the tumor cells on these tumor tissue samples okay and these are known as tissue based tumor markers and these are classically measured by use of immunohistochemistry or by molecular testing in this tutorial we will concentrate only on the serum tumor markers Okay. Now, what are all the tumor markers and what are the categories of uh, tumor markers and how do we remember all these tumor markers? So, to make this concept very simple, uh, I have tried to uh, use this mnemonic called HOLD ME to remember different categories of tumor markers. So, H stands for hormones, O, oncofetal antigens, L, lineage specific proteins, D for DNA markers which are cell free, M, for mucins and other glycoproteins and E enzymes. Okay. Now let us look into each of these categories in detail. Now hormones. You, we all know that you know lots of cells in our body, various tissues in our body produce hormones, right? But in some cancers, the hormone levels can be significantly high and they can be used as diagnostic or prognostic indicators in these cancers. Okay. The important hormones which can be used as tumor markers are human chorionic gonadotrophins which are elevated in trophoblastic tumors, calcitonin which is elevated in medullary carcinoma of thyroid and catecholamines which are elevated in pheochromocytoma which are adrenal medullary tumors. Right? Remember these three hormones, human chorionic gonadotrophins, calcitonin and catecholamines. Now moving on to oncofetal antigens. Onco means cancer, fetal you all know as in fetus, right? And these antigens are normally expressed during fetal development. But they are absent or they show low expression in healthy adult tissues. Okay? But they can be reactivated and expressed at higher concentrations, at higher levels in some cancers. What are the examples of oncofetal antigens? The most common example uh, is alpha fetoprotein. In short, AFP. Okay, they are elevated in liver cell cancers. They can be elevated in non-seminomatous germ cell tumors of testes. The second important oncofetal antigen which we need to know is carcinoembryonic antigen (CEA). They are elevated in carcinomas of colon, more commonly colorectal cancers, right? They are elevated in carcinomas of colon, pancreas, lung, stomach, as well as the heart malignancies. So moving on to lineage specific proteins they are also known as lineage specific antigens so these are basically proteins which are expressed in a cell lineage or a cell type specific manner so uh, when i say that it means that they are useful in identifying the tissue of origin particularly in case of metastatic cancers where we do not know where the primary site of tumor is right when the primary site of tumor is unknown these lineage specific proteins can be used to diagnose a particular cancer for example prostate specific antigen Okay, in short, it is in abbreviated as PSA. They are produced exclusively by the cells of prostate gland. Okay, and they are significantly elevated in prostate cancers. The second important lineage specific proteins which you need to know is immunoglobulins, particularly M protein, which stands for monoclonal immunoglobulin. Okay, monoclonal because they are produced by a single clone of uh, neoplastic cells called plasma cells here in case of multiple myeloma and other gammopathies. So, two important lineage specific proteins you need to know. 
cross state specific antigen and immunoglobulin particularly the m protein moving on to d that is dna markers which are cell free which is also known as circulating tumor dna markers okay because we know that in most of the tumors are because of various factors and one such factor is genetic alterations right one such factor is genetic alteration or mutations and these mutations can be found in these dna fragments which are circulating freely in the blood stream okay now this concept of identifying the mutations in the cell free dna fragments it represent a very promising field in the cancer research of late the most common examples you know we should think of is epidermal growth factor receptor mutations e gfr mutations if they are found it is uh, specific for non small cell lung cancer second important mutations which you which you can see is kras mutations which are significantly they are found in uh, elevated in colorectal and pancreatic cancers third one is braf v600e mutation which are typically seen or elevated in melanomas and pluripotent cancers Now moving on to the m that is mucin and other glycoproteins we you know that glycoproteins are involved in various cellular functions and they play a role in cell addition uh, signaling and immune responses right but then they can be modified they show altered expression or modifications in some cancer cells and that is what is utilized as identification marker for these tumors for example ca125 ca stands for cancer antigen so this is cancer antigen 125 which are typically elevated in ovarian carcinomas the second one is cancer antigen 199 which are elevated in colorectal cancers and pancreatic cancers the third important you know uh, mucin or glycoproteins is cancer antigen 153 which is typically elevated in breast cancers okay, so that's about mucins and other glycoproteins and lastly enzymes the enzymes we all know that they are proteins which catalyze chemical reactions in bodies but elevation of certain enzymes you know they can serve as tumor markers and the common examples which we can think of is lactate dehydrogenase okay they are elevated typically in lymphoma leukemia and germ cell tumor and another important enzyme which can be utilized as serum tumor marker is alkaline phosphatase which can be elevated in liver cancers and bone metastasis now i hope the classification or the categorization of various tumor markers is made simple right by the simple mnemonic called hold me please don't forget this mnemonic uh, it, it makes understanding or remembering these tumor markers much simpler now why do we need to know the tumor markers and what is the important that means what is the importance of tumor markers in pathology and oncology there are variable you know there are various uses of you know uh, tumor markers in pathology and oncology let's learn one by one first is the diagnosis and differential diagnosis let's take one example of prostate specific antigen okay we know that it is this is a lineage specific antigen right so the elevated levels of prostate specific antigen helps in diagnosing prostate cancer right significant elevations you know it tells you it is we are dealing with the prostate cancer and it can also help in differentiating it from benign prostatic hyperplasia where there won't be any significant elevation a second important use is screening in asymptomatic population and early diagnosis of cancer okay, let us take the example of carcino embryonic antigen okay so this particular antigen or uh, this particular marker can be used as a screening tool for colorectal cancers because they are significantly elevated in colonic carcinomas and particularly in case of high risk individuals okay they can be utilized as screening tool and that facilitates early detection and early intervention right now third one is prognosis and planning the treatment now you have you know that you have you are dealing with a particular cancer let's take the example of PA, prostate cancer again so psa levels at the time of diagnosis or during treatment makes a big difference because higher psa levels indicate what more advanced or aggressive disease okay which also means there is higher risk of disease progression and higher risk of disease recurrence so once you know this particular concept it helps the surgeon to guide treatment decisions and then selection of appropriate therapeutic intervention so that way tumor markers helps in prognosticating and planning the treatment you can also monitor the treatment and assess the response to that particular treatment how, how is that possible so for example let us take the example of uh, prostate cancer again 
Now, you are treating this patient. If you see a significant decline in the PSA levels following treatment, what does that indicate? That indicates a favorable response, right? Now, if the PSA levels are rising or persistently elevated, that will indicate treatment resistance. Okay. Another example, uh, CEA, carcino embryonic antigen, that is a marker of choice for monitoring treatment response and early detection of progression in patients with metastatic diseases, particularly in colorectal cancers. Lastly, early detection of relapse. Of course, you know this now, rising or persistently elevated PSA levels indicates early relapse or indicates relapse. Similarly, raising levels of CA125, where, where, where does this carcinoma antigen, cancer antigen 125 is raised? They are elevated in ovarian cancers, right? So, raising levels of this particular marker indicate recurrence of ovarian cancer in those patients who have already been treated, right? So, these are the various importance of uh, tumor markers in pathology and oncology. Before we conclude this particular concept, let's understand that CEA is the tumor marker which is of the highest value in the follow-up of patients with polcolo or rectal cancers. So that's what we learned, right? Right from diagnosis to screening to early diagnosis, prognosticating and planning, monitoring the treatment and assessment of response. And finally, you can also detect the relapse. So that's how tumor markers are utilized. Now, Having known the utility, you should know how they are measured, right? So, we all know that they are measured through various laboratory tests, primarily using the blood as a sample. So, because we are looking at serum tumor markers, right? Now, different tumor markers may require different techniques for accurate measurement. I am not talking about uh, various, um, you know, principles behind all these techniques. Let me give you what are all the techniques, that's all. So, one such technique is enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. You have radio immunoassay, polymerase chain reactions, chemiluminescent immunoassay and fluorescent immunoassays and finally mass spectrometry. These are the various investigative modalities where it helps in detecting these tumor markers. Now, having known the advantages, having known what are the tumor markers and then how do you detect them, we should also know what are the limitations of utility of these tumor markers. One important limitation which I already told you in the beginning itself that it lacks specificity because it may be elevated in conditions other than cancers. That means you can have false positive results, right? No, lack of sensitivity. What does that mean? It means that it may not be elevated in all cases of cancer. That means you can have false negative. Just because you have normal tumor marker level, that doesn't mean that you don't have cancer, right? So, individual variability. See, the levels of tumor marker can vary among individuals. Even with the same type of tumor, even with the same stage of tumor, different individuals have different levels of tumor markers. Okay, So, that is another limitation. And another important limitation is interference from the non-malignant conditions. Now, what does that mean? That means, if you have a coexisting condition, okay, which can lead to elevation of these markers, apart from the tumor it is already there. Once you have both the conditions, tumor as well as the non-neoplastic conditions, which can raise the tumor mark, same tumor marker. So, what does that mean? That means interpretation becomes very challenging for the treating physician, right? So, that is the interference. These are some of the limitations which you need to understand. So, why do we need to understand this? That you cannot rely on tumor marker uh, measurements alone. So, the take-home message is, Tumor markers should be used in conjunction with other diagnostic tools. The other diagnostic tools can be radiological examination, you know, the CT, the X-ray, MRI and all those things and also histopathological examinations and proper clinical evaluation by a very experienced healthcare professional. Now, why do we have to do this? Because it has to be done to ensure accurate interpretation and appropriate decision making. So, with that, we complete the topic on tumor markers. We learned what is tumor marker. We uh, understood the tumor marker classification by a simple mnemonic called hold me, right? Now, importance of uh, tumor markers in pathology and oncology and the various measurement modalities. And finally, we looked into various limitations. Thank you for watching. Do comment if you have any queries to ask or if you like the video, please do comment. Don't forget to subscribe if, if you find this video useful and finally don't forget to share if you find this video useful. Thank you.